Hello everyone, let's solve another math problem. Prove that the limit as x approaches a of the square root of x is equal to the square root of a if a is greater than zero. Uh, and we're given a hint, which is that the absolute value of the square root of x minus the square root of a is equal to the absolute value of x minus a divided by the square root of x plus the square root of a. Now, because we're asked to prove this, uh, it's implied here, especially considering I know what section of that textbook it comes from, that we have to use the precise delta epsilon version of the limit. So this is the statement we need to prove. I'm going to write down, well, this is the limit we need to prove. I'm going to write down the precise statement we need in terms of epsilons and deltas. Uh, and as has happened a few times in the past, Looking at that statement should hopefully give us some hints as to how, um, how we go about proving this. Okay, um, so by writing this statement out, the first thing I see is that the hint we're given is kind of rearing its head, right? We're given a hint. This is the hint we're given, and this expression that appears in the hint is kind of part of the thing that we need to prove being less than epsilon. You can see that this hint is correct by thinking of x and x minus a as being a difference of squares, where you know x is equal to the root of x squared and a is equal to the root of a squared. Um, in terms of choosing, you know, for, for a given epsilon and choose in terms of choosing the appropriate delta, um, one thing I'm going to note is that this function is least well behaved near a equals zero, close to a equals zero. Like that's where that's where this function is farthest away from being continuous. Uh, right, it has an infinite slope there. So the choice of delta that works when a is equal to zero should work for other values of a. Now we're not asked to show this for a equals zero, but I'm still going to make that that choice of delta probably. Um, before I kind of fully lock in exactly that value of delta that I want to use, I'm going to do some manipulations of things here um, and, uh, and, and kind of work through some rough work um, and then I'll come back and put everything together. Okay, this took quite a bit longer than I expected because in my mind I was kind of bouncing back and forth between many different ideas. I couldn't really focus on one thing. And in fact, the original idea that I, that I, um, the original idea that I had, which was to choose delta equal root epsilon, it looked like showing that that in fact works is more difficult than I expected. I'm sure that this choice of delta does work, and that basically comes from uh, drawing a picture like this, but um, working through the algebra of it um, seemed to be a little bit more difficult than I expected. Um, what I have done is come up with a choice of delta in terms of both epsilon and a uh, that I'm pretty sure will work. So let's work through the argument of everything here. So the expression we're going to start with is root x minus root a in absolute values. According to the hint, this is equal to x minus a divided by 
root x plus root a. Before I do anything, in fact, let me, um, sort of starting fresh, let's start from the beginning where I say, um, let epsilon be greater than zero be given. I'm going to define delta to be equal to the minimum of epsilon divided by root a times 1 plus 1 over root 2 and a over 2. Okay, so that's that's delta and we're also now we're allowed to suppose that 0 is less than x minus a is less than delta. Okay, so we have this. We know that this is less than delta divided by root x plus root a. Okay, all I've done is use this inequality. So I've replaced x minus a with delta, so the whole thing gets bigger. Now I'm going to look at the denominator. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make this term smaller, which makes the whole thing bigger. So I'm going to replace x with a minus delta. Okay. I know that x has to be between a minus delta and a plus delta. That's what this says. So if I replace x with its minimum possible value, which is a minus delta, x, x has to be bigger than this, then this thing has now gotten smaller, but because it's in the denominator, the whole thing gets bigger. I also don't have to worry about um, things being equal to zero or, or, or negative, like there's no negatives under the square root because, um, because I've also chosen delta to be smaller than a over two. So a minus delta has to be um, greater than a over two, okay? So in fact, I can now replace a minus delta. I'm going to replace this with a over two because, uh, and I can do that because by replacing this with a over two, um, okay, so because delta is less than, less than or equal to a over two, a minus delta will also be, um, wait, this doesn't work. Ah, right, 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 right. Okay. Back up, back up, back up. <laughs> All right, I have to do this in one step. All right. Maybe it'll help to draw a number line here again. There's A. There's A over 2. Okay. I have some value of delta, which essentially defines an interval around A symmetrically, like this. All right. But um, so x has to be within this interval. And the width of this interval, the, the leftmost, like, like this interval will never contain A over 2 because delta is less than or equal to a over two, okay? So we know that x is greater than a over two. So if I replace x with a over two, the denominator gets smaller, which means the entire expression gets bigger. Okay, great, we can do that. Uh, now I'm just going to factor some things here. This is a root a times one plus one over root two, okay? And I have that delta is less than or equal to that quantity there. So if I replace delta with that quantity,
Ooh. Uh, crap. Yeah, my, the way I formulated this is not right. It should be epsilon times this thing. Oops. Oops. Okay, well, up till now, we haven't actually used this part of the definition of delta yet, so everything still holds here. Um, but now, if I've defined delta like this, I know delta is less than or equal to that quantity. So if I replace delta with that quantity, then everything gets larger. And of course, that's just equal to epsilon. So I have then that root x minus root a is less than epsilon by combining all of the inequalities. Yeah, this took, uh, this was a little bit more difficult than I expected. Um, I, I think, you know, when I was going through the rough work, the reason it took longer is I, I was exploring at least two different ideas for how to properly um, figure out a good choice of delta. Um, and then, yeah, that little mistake, uh, I should have, I should have realized right away that delta, of course, should be chosen to be equal to epsilon times this thing, not epsilon divided by that thing. Um, so that's a little bit of a, um, little bit of a mental lapse there, I guess. Um, but this choice of delta will work. Um, this here is the proof for that, that it does work. Um, and I guess the key here was also kind of recognizing that we want to replace this value of x with something smaller to make the whole thing bigger. Um, yeah. I don't think there's too much more I want to say about this one, but if I have any more comments, I'll put them down in the description. Thanks for watching.